So recording is started. So this is the second meeting of the uh, DSpace Entities Working Group. Uh, I'll be facilitating this meeting, uh, but uh, Tim is here for support and we all hope Tim that you will recover soon. Uh, so for this meeting, uh, the plan was to uh, go through uh, discussions and documentations about uh, the configuration of the entity types and the relations for the first two sections and then the J Java API. Considering the team uh, is not 100% today, uh, the suggestion would be to go through the document that Andrea linked uh, to the main document this morning uh, with the uh, alternative uh, 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 suggestion and proposal for the document. So I, I'm not sure all of you already had the chance to, to read the document through. So uh, I, I guess a, a presentation from Andrea would be useful for all. And then in the second part of the meeting, I mean, as, as Tim suggested to, to keep the meeting short for, for several reasons, but we can open up to discussions and then uh, we'll have an offline uh, conversations and working all together on the document to share your feedback and, and questions and answers, get ready for the next meeting next week. Um, anyone has any, uh, if, I mean, if anyone, if no one has any other uh, suggestions for the meeting, we can start and ask Andrea to, uh, to start and go through the document all together. I want to add just one, one brief comment. Um, uh, I just wanted to note before we get started into, into this sort of deep dive, just to remind everybody, um, not just those here, but also those listening to the recording later, that um, as we're going through and analyzing both of these proposals, uh, the questions that come up, are, are not necessarily specific to either Atmire or For Science. Um, so I think that it is useful for everybody to give feedback into these questions and what you think. It's not that Atmire has to answer all the questions about their proposal and, and For Science has to answer all the questions about their proposal, but it's an opportunity to build a discussion here around um, these proposals and come to a conclusion. Um, and I think the more community feedback we get through this process, the easier it will be to come to some sort of decision it may not necessarily be a consensus, but at least we'll get more feedback in and make a better solution for, for all everybody who uses DSpace. Um, so with that said, that, that's all I wanted to add. I just want to remind that that is our scope here. We're not trying to, to, to bang on getting Atmire and Science to answer questions on their proposal, but they are more than welcome to. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Sure. Andrea? Okay, so if no one have to add other topic to the agenda, I just shared it again to the link to the comment on uh, the Zoom chat, uh, but you also have the link on, uh, on Slack. I see that a lot of people have joined now on the Google Docs, so I guess that everyone is here now. Um, yeah, the idea is quite simple and is uh, is based on the existing prototype from Atmai. So um, the basic uh, idea is what was the suggestion of the previous entity working group. So essentially to use the, the space item um, as storage for any kind of entity. Uh, this is the commonality with the uh, Atmire uh, prototype. Uh, what we suggest to, to change is uh, the way that the relationship between entities are stored in the system. Um, our suggestion is to use uh, a feature that is uh, already exists in this space, is uh, uh, very used, is the authority framework. Uh, this is a feature that uh, uh, in the previous version was not so uh, known. Uh, but it was introduced in uh, 1.6, so it's a long time feature in this space. And with this feature, essentially, you are able to, uh, to link uh, an item with external entities. So you can say that uh, metadata have, uh, um, have a specific uh, ID uh, that uh, allow you to uniquely identify a concept or an external terms, or also, uh, of course, an, uh, an author or another entity. Um, 
there is some noise from some participant. Okay, yeah, it's disappeared now. Mm. So uh, the authority framework, the, the major use of the authority framework right now in this space is for the ORCID integration. So every in institute, any in this space installation that have an ORCID integration, uh, now use the authority framework to, uh, to link uh, the author name with a rich record that currently is stored in, uh, in Solar in the current ORCID uh, authority of, of the space, uh, where you have additional metadata, including the ORCID ID. So the idea is uh, uh, to rely on this, uh, uh, this existent feature to, to store relation with other items in the space. So if you use an item for, to represent a, a people, a person, or to represent an organization or a journal or whatever, you can uh, simply store the UID of the, of the item or uh, an, uh, an unique identifier of this item in the authority of, uh, of the metadata that link the, uh, the original item to publication with the author and, and so on. If you look uh, to the uh, document, I think that the most explicative uh, part is in the storage. If you look to the storage into the base, uh, you can see also I included a diagram uh, where um, you can see that a publication, for instance, is a link to have several author. Uh, some of these author are uh, well known. So you have an, uh, a rich profile for this researcher in the system. This means that uh, researcher one and researcher two are these base items where you can store additional information about this researcher, as for instance, the ORCID ID. And another researcher instead is uh, uh, less known to the system, is an external researcher. So you don't have uh, anything more than just the name as it appear in the publication. And most of the time, it don't make uh, any sense to create uh, uh, a very basic record which is just a string if you don't know anything about the researcher. Uh, using the authority, uh, the authority framework, you are able to do that because uh, the author are just metadata in the item. So you have the C contributor author and for the external research, you just store the string value. For researcher one and researcher two, you also store the UID of the items that tell you more about this researcher in the system. Uh, the other nice thing to use the authority framework for uh, to manage relationship is if you look to the research publication two, uh, this publication two also have a contributor author, but this time uh, the author is not really a person, but is an organization. This is a quite common use case in many uh, uh, field, uh, because for instance, if, uh, physicians have a lot of research group that uh, usually sign the publication. But this is not just limited to the publication. So when you have a relation that is the authorship, uh, not, uh, not always, uh, you don't have uh, fixed uh, target entities for the relation. Uh, from on one side you have a publication, but the other side could be a person or could be an organization. Using the uh, authority framework, you are able to do that. You just need to create your authority um, implementation that is able to look up in, uh, in both directory. And this is quite simple as we will use uh, items for, uh, both, for any entity's type. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just want to make a, a brief intersection comment here that both of those use cases are also supported in the other model. Just, I mean, the, the, the implementation is a bit different, but both of these are also possible in the other model. I can show examples of it later. I, I don't want to interrupt the whole thing for too long, but um, this is also perfectly possible in the other model. It's just the way that it's implemented that is different. So, but yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, I would like to discuss that more uh, at the end because uh, I'm not completely sure about that. For instance, uh, is almost true for everything? 
but in uh, uh, if you store relation into the database in the way that is presented in the other prototype, uh, you will be not able to decide that author could be a researcher or could be an organization. You could have two different relation for sure. So you can say we, we, these are the person author and these are the organization author, but it's not exactly the same because uh, if you need to mix one person and one organization and you want to make, uh, to keep track of the proper order, uh, then the organization appear first or second or thing like that is really different. So you are not able to really track this uh, graph uh, in the other prototype. But we can discuss more. So yeah, if we, we have implemented it already uh, earlier this weekend. We have an example of it. So it is possible, but I'll, I'll show you how, uh, how, how it just works later on. Yeah, so. I think that will be useful for the discussion to see how this exact data model is implemented in the other approach as well. Uh, in any case, uh, there are also other advantage uh, of this approach. One is for the external researcher. So in this uh, case, you are not required, not strictly required to create uh, uh, an item for external researcher. Uh, you can do that if you like, but if the only uh, need that you have is to sort your uh, external researcher name into publication metadata, you can just use string value. And these, of course, don't apply only to author, also to other metadata in, uh, in the publication. It's quite convenient to create an authority of journal, but is not a trivial organization issue. So not all institutions will be able to maintain a list of an authority list of journal or to keep this uh, list uh, um, uh, quality proof. So in some case, it will be just easier to keep the current solution of the space to, uh, to have a flat uh, stream. And with this approach, you are not required to create additional items if you don't need. Uh, this becomes much more important when you talk about the new submission. Uh, in an ideal world, you have all the components that you need, the, all the entities, and you just make connection with this entity. But what happens in the reality is when you submit a publication, of, uh, many times you have some author that already exists in the system, and some author that not uh, yet exist in the system. And you need to create this entity on the fly. Uh, if you use the authority framework, you can just put the string name for this author and have uh, a consumer in the system to create, if you like, the entity when the, uh, when the item is uh, uh, approved, is archived in the system. Uh, delay the creation of the author record uh, simplify it as, uh, the, the else cleaning because of course if you you can do the same also in the other prototype if you put a name that is not in the index at runtime you immediately create the entity but if uh, after uh, just one step the submitter say oh I, I put the wrong name and I need to fix something change the name of the researcher or remove the external researcher that was just created. It's a lot of house cleaning stuff that need to be maintained to keep all the data in sync. And this becomes more and more complex if you think about parallel submission where stuff created by your researcher could be used by other researcher in other submission or thing like that. Another point is then the authority framework is already integrated with ORCID. So it's what is used for the ORCID integration. So for instance, this means that uh, if you just care about publication and uh, uh, researcher profile, you can use the ORCID integration to look up in the ORCID registry, get uh, the ORCID ID and the name and create automatically a, a researcher profile from this data. So um, there are much more features already available with this, uh, with this approach without any development, any custom development for uh, to introduce the entities. Uh, if, if I can interrupt, if I can interrupt on that one as well, if you're working with items representing an entity, of course the ORCID integration will need to be modified as well to make sure it doesn't just create an authority record, but it should create the item entity as well. So that should be redesigned just as much as it would need to be redesigned for 
using uh, database relations. The, the question where the relation is stored is not the important part here. We need to create the entity item in either case. I'm sorry to disagree with you, Ben, on that, but uh, if you introduce a new concept that is the relation, and uh, we need to manage this relation in the submission, uh, you can for sure use the authority to, as a workaround. So during the submission, use the authority to, to get our information. And once the item is published, you move the information from the authority to the relation. Uh, but essentially, it is mean that you are using the authority framework and you are just moving the data once the, these are ready. Uh, if you want to go to really use the relation structure, uh, you need to create a new component into submission so that uh, the user will have input where they can search, look up for existent author and so on. And in any case, one of the question, one of the points that I have highlighted in, in the approach is, uh, we say that uh, not all institutions want to deal with additional entities. Some institutions want to stay with a basic space and don't want to care about uh, additional entities at all. But in this case, which will be the uh, role of the authority framework and the relation, there are two features that do more or less the same thing. And uh, it will be unclear when you need to use one or the other. And if you have more code to maintain, it will be just, yeah, more code to maintain is just a, uh, a major boundary in, uh, in in maintenance. So I, I don't think that is exactly the the same. Uh, and are translate. You implying, yeah, sorry. Are you implying that that uh, for every authority control um, field you use in, in D space seven that you always work with the entities in that case? Because that's not how I read through your document, but you may have meant that, of course. Mm. But you'll never use authority control without entities. No, this is this is not, not true. Uh, there are a lot of authority outside here uh, that are related to external system, and you are not required to create a, a local cache of this uh, of this data. For instance, also institutions that have an ORCID integration and don't want to manage a researcher profile could just use the existent ORCID uh, authority and it will work without any change. The change that you need to uh -huh. make on, uh, on the ORCID authority is, uh, um, is just the, the final storage. Instead, in use a special uh, uh, solar core where you store this data, you can decide to use entities. But if you look to the mesh subject or uh, the get thesaurus, uh, you are not required to, to maintain these uh, additional thesaurus as this uh, space entity. You use an authority that uh, dynamically will use the, the web service from this provider to get the terms. Okay. In, in, in that, that case, I don't see how you're stating that uh, it's not important in your proposal to, <clears throat> to verify whether something is just an authority record or whether it's an entity because you'll be making the, the, the exact same choice. And, and plus, I think it's even more unclear to the user because you're using the authority framework for both. So it doesn't make it so clear when you have to choose for the authority framework and when you have to choose for um, for an, an entity in the authority framework. When is it about a vocabulary and when is it about an entity? Where, I mean, the way we saw it now is that, um, you know, having an entity as an item um, uh, is, is to be used if you really want to have a separate dedicated page for that object. If you want to be able to show a page about the project with all the relations. And if you just want to have the project ID attached to a publication record, you would use authority control. So, and, and uh, oh, this is, this will be solved very easily uh, in the configuration of the authority. 
you can just uh, uh, imagine about a flag uh, in the configuration that say I want to uh, transform the record in entities or not. So you will, in any case, you will use the ORCID authority to, to get the idea of the author. If you want to create an ORCID profile, you say true in enable a local profile. If you want to have local profile for project from OpenAir, you can use the OpenAir project authority that for instance, we have in, uh, in this space, Chris, that look up into web services. If you want to uh, just get the ID, use this uh, authority as is. If you want to create also project uh, profile, you can uh, set this uh, flag to say local profile true, and it will be used. For the user, there is no choice. It's just a way I want to control the metadata. So I use authority control for that. And uh, I want to create or not local profile for what I have used. Mm, this is mm, this is very natural in my opinion how to configure this aspect. Yeah, but then it's it's actually quite the same in in both scenarios. I would say so. I I don't see how this is a determining factor to decide whether you want to store the relationship as a database table or as an, an authority control. I mean. In, in, in both proposals, you will have, let's say we talk only about publication and author now, for, for example. So you will have the, the user will have the option to put in a, a clear a, the text value as it is today. You will have the opportunity to use an authority control that just has authority controlled string values with no entities behind it. And the third option is to have entities. And so I don't see how this, this can determine whether one implementation is to be preferred over another. Okay, um, I will try to convince you with additional argument because I see again uh, other benefits for that. But I want to just highlight one thing now. I think that if at the end we say that with both proposal we can achieve the same result, we are already having preferred uh, the use of authority control for a simple thing that authority control already exists and in both cases need to stay. So if we need less effort, if we need less Java classes, if we need uh, less change, it will be better. Because less change you do into the database, you introduce something that uh, we agree that is not yet the final solution because we are going fast to support this implementation, but we don't have the full idea of what are the needed. More we can postpone new concept, introduction of new concept, better will be, safe will be for the community, in my opinion. But in any case, I want to anticipate other benefit that I see here. Um, if you, in the current way to store relation in additional data, uh, table, you just store the, uh, the foreign key. So you say this publication is related to this researcher, but you don't say anything about which is the string that is used uh, uh, to create this connection. And this string is quite important in several domain. For instance, uh, an author have several uh, variants, se several name. Of course, this name could appear in the local profile. So in your local profile, in your ORCID, you can have the official name, your translated name, uh, the family name, the marriage name, and everything like that. But if you want to really track uh, which publication was signed with which exact name, and this could be also important for historical, well, there is pseudonym. If you talk about a uh, uh, pop in a historical domain that are signed before or after that they become pop or other famous uh, person, it's quite relevant to, to know which publication, which object was signed with one name or another. Uh, there are, of course, other structures that allow you to, to manage also this kind of thing in a database structure, uh, but I think that is quite more complex. So if you like to make an experiment with your, with your proposal to, uh, to describe how you are able to, um, to have a publication uh, authored by a researcher and an organization that was an interesting uh, use case. And another example where you have 
two publications authored by the same people, but using two different names, and you want to store this name, this also will be uh, useful to see how complex will become maintain this information in a completely uh, normalized database structure that is what you propose for relation. Uh, so this is one other uh, benefit that I see. Uh, the other is for the community at all when we talk about the migration. Uh, if you have an existing space and you migrate to the space seven and start to think about, I want to start to use entities. Uh, in uh, your uh, approach, the idea, if you have special table for relation, you need to convert the C contributor or author in something else. So we need SQL script to, uh, to migrate, to normalize, to clean up the data all together during the migration when you enable entities. If you use authority control, as, uh, you just start with the, your existing database, all the items have just simple string, and you can just upgrade one item by one, uh, editing the item and say, okay, this Bolini Andrea is this one, this is another, uh, I want to create a local profile or not. So you can also do that massively for all if this is the case, but the decision is up to you. And I think that this will make uh, the migration uh, much easier, both at the technical aspect and at the organization aspect, because they can start uh, one piece, uh, maybe just uh, fix all the recent items or things like that. Uh, well, of course, the same is going to apply for the model that we proposed. Um, on one hand, you don't have to migrate to entities, but if you do, for instance, want to migrate the uh, authority control authors to uh, a person entity, you will need to migrate them to items. That's true for both proposals. You can do that in batch, and that's going to be similar for both proposals. Uh, or you can do that one by one. And the difference there will be that in your proposal, you have two different solutions in authority control for the author. And on, in our proposal, you have a public person and a private person, for instance, where the, you only make the public people accessible and, the private, and you keep the private people with limited read routes so that you can, for instance, later on, make them, still make them public. But you can do the, the process of migrating them to items all at once. So it's just a matter of determining whether you make a certain person public. Yeah, I'm not sure that you can do that for just a subset of the items. So if you start decide to migrate the author, you will migrate to all the author. Uh, the, the other thing, uh, please check careful about uh, uh, what mean to create uh, new uh, arcoded entities, so to create items for each new uh, submission when you need to describe author uh, from the start. Because um, I think that the, the host cleaning work during the submission when the author name is not yet uh, finalized or some author are added and removed, it's not trivial. So this is my worry. I will like, I will appreciate if you can uh, uh, describe better how uh, this scenario is managed in your current prototype and you can reason about the number of query that need to be done into the database to maintain that in terms of insert into the database, update or delete and all the consequences that you have in terms of uh, table lock or row lock uh, in the table. I think that is quite much more complex to manage uh, from the start at the space item for everything. That is what is required if you just need to put a foreign key in uh, the relation table. But I, I would like to see more detail in your proposal about this aspect. So yes, okay, we, can, we can work that out in more detail if you want. Okay, thank you. And yeah, and one small comment about the submission is, yeah, there is, of course, at the moment, nothing implemented in the prototype for the submission because the submission pull requests are not there yet. Um, but we do have specifications for it. 
we just decided not to include them in the document because the code is not there. So, but we do have something in mind. Um, and, and yeah, you know that is, uh, I want to clarify a bit uh, the words. It is not the code is not here, is the code is not yet merged in the, uh, into the Space Master. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Wow. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you are absolutely uh, like uh, to to check the pull request, and we don't have yet uh, have received a review on the pull request uh, that is here for since more than one month. I have restructured now, and on the new restructured pull request, I received some positive feedback uh, uh, right now. So I think that you can just check out the branch and work on it if if you like. Yeah, we've done that, but we've, we have looked at the big pool request that was initially uh, sent, but this doesn't have to turn into a DSpace 7 meeting, but we did check that, but we didn't implement anything yet because it's not merged in master. So yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. And again, uh, I want to stress uh, the argument about how much work is needed to, uh, to put in place this, uh, this approach. I think that the major work that was required is what uh, Atmaya already have done in his prototype. So we can completely reuse uh, uh, the code developed in, uh, on the Angular side to, um, to characterize the, uh, the different entity types so that you can have a different page for researcher, for uh, publication, for organization. This is what Atmaya already have done in is prototype. There is no need to uh, work on this code in a different way. So there is no need of any change into the space API uh, for uh, any feature because the, the search and the browse system already support uh, the authority. Uh, the bulk edit already support the authority. The package ingester, the dissemination ingester support authority. This means that also in the IP, uh, you have an initial support of this entity because this relation will be uh, will partially be in, uh, in the AP. Uh, so the only thing that probably you uh, will be needed to, to create is a, an authority that is able to look up in uh, uh, in existent items, making a filter based on the entity type. Uh, this is some existent code in the space crease that we can absolutely uh, reuse, or in any case, this is a very small class that can be easily uh, created in, I think, less than one day of work. So it's very limited amount of work to, uh, to have all the, the, uh, the required component for this proposal uh, in place. And of course, we can spend more time to improve the solution, to have an additional feature, to, uh, to do a lot of things, but the basic component all exist or are in the, uh, in the prototype already implemented by Atmire. So, yeah. If there are any other questions? Thanks, Andrea. Um, I th I think there's a lot of interesting concepts here um, that I admit I have to think about more once I'm back back to myself since my head is a little bit concept or a little bit cloudy. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but uh, one question I did have from from the get go. So I guess um, if I'm understanding this correctly, so in this model, um, items are still, of course, ent or entities are still items. Um, authority control. Uh, may or may not use entities depending on whether the um, the object that it's referring to is either internal or external um, so entities are optional for authority control but all entities are authority control they're local authority control so we'd probably have to i'm assuming there's going to have to be some more solar indexes to be able to uh, pull that information out in a way uh, that it's useful in the submission process and to understand uh, which ones are local versus external? Yeah, it's already here. Okay. So the, the search core of Solar already index all the items. 
Uh, so this is why you can just search in, uh, uh, in the search core and find any existent item. Uh, in the current code in the master, you only have published items. Uh, but uh, as you know from the open repository demo, uh, the pull request to support uh, submission and so on also introduce uh, the indexing of uh, any in progress submission. Uh, right. in, in solar. This means that you can look up also for items that are not yet published. And as by default, any metadata of the item are indexed, uh, if uh, we essentially propose the same structure for the entity than uh, the HMI prototype. So we expect to have a metadata in the item where the type of entity is stored, essentially exactly as in the other prototype. And this could be used to uh, scope the search to a specific entity. So if you like to search only for researcher, you will say uh, entities uh, dot type uh, colon uh, researcher. If you want search in uh, researcher and uh, organization, you will have uh, a NOR query. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think that, that clarifies it a little bit more in my, my head. I'm curious to hear from others who've listened to this um, this discussion um, in terms of um, just immediate um, thoughts or or comments. Um, we will have more time to be able to look at this back at your own institution and add comments into the Google Doc that Andrea created. Um, but I would like to just get a sense of what others are thinking so far. Does this look promising? Do you want to bring it back and look at it closer? Do you have some concerns about um, just storing the relationship at the in in a authority control? Um, just curious to hear what others are thinking so far. Hello. Hey, Paulo. Hi. <laughs> I think it's a, a, a good approach, but I have um, some concerns. Uh, one of those concerns is the, probably a performance issue since you are going to use strings to fetch uh, um, entities, I think. Um, Perhaps I need to, to analyze a bit more the, the Andrea's document um, to understand a little bit better. But uh, I have this uh, performance concern for this approach. Okay. Thank you for, for making that known. And that's something yeah. we can work on detailing. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, I just want to, to add that uh, one of the benefits that I see on this approach is a potential performance gain. Uh, because uh, in the metadata, you have also the text value. This means that for a basic visualization of the item, you don't need to fetch at all the linked entities if you don't need additional information. But when you get the item, you get uh, the string that is used in the item to sign uh, the, uh, to sign the publication and you get the ID of the linked author. So you can create uh, the link to, to the tail page without fetching any information from the author. If you want to fetch additional information because you want to create a, a richer visualization where you can see or showcase also the ORCID ID or the affiliation or other fact about the author, uh, you just need to make a query on the primary key of the uh, entities because the authority is a string, but it will be the UID of the items. So essentially it's just uh, get the item using uh, uh, its primary key. It's very, very fast. Uh, the opposite- you, yeah. you will lose, you, you, sorry, sorry. You will use uh, Solar to, to make those searches? not for the direct relation. So if you want to go from the publication to the, uh, if, to if the you, author. For instance, if, if you have a, an author and you want all the publications for that author, how do oh, you do this? Yeah, thanks for this question because this was our, another important uh, uh, benefit that I see. When you need to explore inverse relation, uh, 
I feel that the, the only solution is to go on solar. So in this approach, TDI is you will make a query on solar to say I want to have all the publication that they have uh, uh, author underscore authority equals and the UID. And you will get the list of uh, publication. Why this is much better than make a query on the database? Because you don't want to just have the list of publication, but you need to have the list in a proper order. You need to paginate this list. You need to sort the list on specific criteria. You need, you want to propose facet. Uh, you want to create a rich experience to navigate this publication. So at the end, also if you have this data available in the database, it's much better, much easier to query Solar, get the list of publication in the proper order and show the page that you are interested in. If you want to but sort- that is independent of the storage for the database, because right yeah, now yeah. the entities model that we implemented already does support searching on the ID yeah. of the person and querying them and seeing the publication. So that's specifically, yes saying okay both models do that but the difference is the model that you approach doesn't support retrieving all um, all, yeah. all the related items directly from the database which and may not be relevant in the Chris use case or may not be the most important thing in the Chris use case but for instance in the compound journals use case it's going to be much more relevant for a journal to, to get a list of all his volumes because you're going to not display search for volumes you're going to display the volumes in the order that they have been stored and for the volume you're going to retrieve the higher level journal directly so there are use cases where you can use no, no. Uh, Sorry. The, the, the bidirectional relation but not having a bidirectional relation is not an advantage it's, it's a feature less because Searching is something that either model supports. Okay, so Ben, I, I agree with you. It's a feature that both models support. And this approach doesn't support uh, direct query on the database, or unless don't support with uh, reasonable performance, the, uh, the query on the database uh, in, uh, directly from the database for inverse relation but there are no real use case where you want to go onto the database to query. Because also the example that you do, I uh, have much better result going to solar. If you want to have the list of uh, volume for a journal, you can make a query on solar and you can decide to sort by the date of issue or for volume number or for whatever you want. If you make this query onto the database and you want to sort for something, the performance will be very pure because the metadata are in a different table, you know? So you need to join and it's not really feasible. So again, I will yeah, like to see... If you're, you're going to sort on something in the metadata of the related item, that's not going to be applicable if you have a fixed order, for instance, if you have just like metadata, we have the place in there so that you can say, okay, this is journal volume one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you just use them and you display them in the order that they have been added to the, to the journal. So that's even another feature that's in there. You do have that place column yeah. in both directions. No, it's not true. So it's so not true. It's, it's just a metadata of the volume. That's true. Okay, I suggest to do. I suggest to do uh, one thing because it's a bit difficult to discuss this detail right now. If uh, if you can write down the use case, the scenario, we can check if it is feasible in both uh, uh, in both approach, and which will be the performance. Because we need to write down the detail. I'm. From my side, I'm sure that it's manageable on uh, both approach and the performance will be the same and both approach will, at the end, need to go on solar. But I will uh, very be happy to, to be contracted. So if you have a real scenario and you can break down and we figure out that it's not the case, we can decide if it's relevant or not. Well, we have a real scenario with the compounds and okay you can always use search but then you're 
using search because you don't have any other options and not because yes but it's, because you had a choice yes okay but i don't want to buy a ferrari if i need to go to the market i want to buy a ferrari if i need to or uh, to race so it's not useful to put something in place just to say okay i have this feature if we don't have scenario that really benefit are beneficial to have this feature i don't see the point really i understand that the, for the chris model there's no specific benefit for having a bi-directional relation but it's not the only model that exists okay please just write down one single model where this is useful and we can check today just yeah, one i think it'd be useful to get to use cases here so um because I'm unclear myself, um, I'm a little foggy, like I said, but I think it would be useful to talk about the scenarios of bi-directional relationships um, and some sort of use cases for why these become important at the database level to be able to do that. Um, just because I think that will easily clarify um, one of the key differences between these two proposals, or at least I would hope it would. And that may allow us to better analyze and discuss um, whether those use cases are high enough priority to make sure they have to be that way or whether those use cases could be implemented in other ways, I don't know. Um, but I think it would be useful to bring this to use cases that that um, each of these proposals feel that they sort of uh, meet better or that might be a gotcha sort of a use case that the other proposal may not be able to support as well because that would allow us to kind of really get our minds around this more. Okay, because we have been thinking about some of the things from uh, Andrea's document and um, we'll see whether we already have something that we could show for that. And I'm not sure we have enough time to go through that in detail today, Ben. So that's why I'm kind of wondering if this is a useful to document these sort of use cases and scenarios uh, in these two documents themselves. Um, so we can kind of talk through them at the next meeting um, to bring us closer to sort of a, a decision point on these. And that would also allow us to start to comment on them between now and the next meeting. Okay. And if they're already somewhere buried in some of these documents, at least highlight them so we can kind of understand them better or add a little bit more description because I think that's where the gap is here. I don't yeah, even for, fully for, understand for this so part and for the um, the uh, authorship between org units and authors. Um, we added some slides to the presentation that I did last week, so I can show that next time if you like. I can also do it now if you want. I mean, there are only five or so slides, so it's not that difficult. But I think one of the the key other points, um, Ben, if, correct me if I'm wrong, that we had is that. You know, with the if you do if you do need bi-directional relations with the authority control implementation, you're also doing data duplication. And okay, there might be some that there is there are also a lot of disadvantages to duplicating the data. But Ben can explain this much no, better. Okay. Can. can you explain why there is data duplication? Where is the data duplicated? From your proposal, you had a solution for the bidirectional relations, if I read it correctly, where you would automatically create uh, a relation in both items to each other based on a consumer, if I remember correctly. So if you have, if you put in a publication and you add an author to it, then that author should be an entity. Then in the author item, you would also create that reverse relation and you use the metadata value table for, for those. So you basically yeah. have that value in there twice. Okay. So sorry for that. I think that I, I need to clarify this part uh, because for instance, the author publication will be never written to author metadata. So I don't expect to have the list of publication as metadata of the author for sure. Uh, the, um, the optional item, the consumer that, uh, that I put here was for uh, a more strict uh, um, reverse uh, relation like a publication and data set 
where I want to update the item, the, the target item metadata to explicitly include a, a link, because for instance, this could be could simplify um, update of the IPMH record or indexing of this publication, uh, but is not strictly required. Also, if you have a one-to-one -one relation, you can always from the publication make a query on Solar and say, give me all the data set that uh, are linked to this publication. Uh, but it's become convenient to update the item of the data set as well uh, when you create a publication that is linked to the data set because maybe you want to update the uh, metadata of the data set on uh, data site and you need to, uh, to regenerate uh, metadata of the item. So this become a very uh, specific implementation detail uh, that I don't I don't think that we should include in, uh, in the discussion, in the real discussion is not about the approach. You can completely withdraw to consumer. You don't need it. It's an optional item, it's an, an additional uh, uh, possibility that you have if you have a very specific use case and you see that this is very relevant. And in this case, I agree with you that there is a duplication of uh, data, but you can completely withdraw from the proposal and never change. Okay, so with I that, we only to have clarify a, a bit more into documentation as well, if possible. Yeah, that'd be good, Andrea. And I'd, I'd ask that others start to add comments into Andrea's document here um, so that we can um, track uh, these questions a little bit better. I have jotted down a couple notes here um, throughout the meeting that I'll also post on the wiki page uh, likely tomorrow, but, um, but I'm not sure that I captured all of the comments and questions, so it would be useful to have others um, enhance these and, and add your comments directly into the documents. Um, but since we only have a couple minutes left, I did want to try and see if we can figure out a time for our next meeting. There are no conflicts, and I just checked and double checked again at the same time next Tuesday or even an hour earlier if we wanted to do an hour earlier. Um, but I guess I'm curious, is, does this time generally work for folks? Would you prefer it get moved to a different day? Or do I need to just do a doodle poll? I think what, what, what I would propose uh, is to, because we were talking about some, some specific use case and Andrea mentioned a few where he said, okay, I would like to see how the model does this. I think it would be useful if we wait two weeks this time and that um, we take a look at how we will implement or how this model can implement some of the use case so we can have a better side-by-side -side comparison so that everybody can see like, okay, this is how it works in um, the database relation model and this is how it works in the authority control model. And then it would be useful to have two weeks time. Um, I'm okay with that, provided that people are active in the documents and that also leave in, you, you already alluded to some presentation slides, those need to get shared um, during this two-week period to allow this discussion to actually occur in a more offline fashion. So I think that's the only way that works, is if the, we share all the information we have along with those use cases that we feel are, are potentially problematic with the other solution. But I'm yeah, okay I have that. them in the slides. I'll, I'll throw them into the document and expand that. Andrea, if you could post like the, the two, three main things. So you've already said the, the relation is author of relation to like an org unit that's, or an entity that's not a person. Um, you mentioned the name variance um, problem where you have several string values for an author name and you would like to assign one particular value to a particular relation between a publication and uh, the person. But I might be forgetting some of the other ones, so it would be useful if you could. No, the, the other one, the major one is uh, uh, what is missing in this uh, um, new approach compared to your approach in terms of uh, real use case uh, as implementation. Because my point is uh, less code is better, for sure, because less work you do, less code you have to maintain, and it's easier to evolve. You don't need to, to set constraint uh, in advance. You can decide about structure when you really need this structure. It's, there is no reason to put a structure if you don't see a benefit in put that. This is my experience in project management in general. 
Okay, so we need to jump in here and wrap this up. Um, I think that it is useful to bring those use cases and questions into into the documents themselves to make sure they are documented there. As I said, I, I did capture some of the discussion here in some notes, which I'll post, um, but I agree that we need to get those those noted down um, textually. Uh, so, but if we meet in two weeks, is this time in two weeks work for folks? This The room is also available, the main DSpace room in two weeks, which would be um, September 25th, Tuesday, September 25th. Yeah, I have a conflict with the Dura Cloud contributor call. Okay. Could you go an hour earlier? Or is that difficult? It will be fine for me one hour early. What about others? Does an hour earlier than this work on the 25th? It's okay for me, Paul. Okay. Thank you, Paulo. I think I have that open. The textbook and dance. Oh my gosh. Works for me as well, Tim. Okay, thank you. thank you, Patrick. For me too, and we'll all shut up and let you go back under the covers because you do sound very sick. So yeah, <laughs> keep quiet now. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we'll we'll meet again on the twenty fifth, an hour earlier than this, which would be ten o'clock Eastern, and I think it's that's fourteen yep. UTC, I believe. Uh, so thank you all. Um, great discussion today, and we'll get the the video posted and all that um, probably tomorrow sometime. Okay, thank you, thank Tim. You. Take Thank care, Ian. Thanks. Bye. Bye.